Uh, what's really interesting is that I think that the two groups have come up with something which is highly complementary, uh, but obviously we've approached it slightly differently. So we've got a plan. It's a plan that we hope um, could help to create a movement for change within Swedish municipalism. Okay? So what we want you to do is to sign up to the collaborative manifesto. Um, and this is, but then we got really overexcited and we're going to do it in lots of other places. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, in fact, basically, we're doing this. Are you with us or against us? <laughs> so, you know, the, you know, focusing back on the question that we were posed yesterday, but also, um, and I think this is where you guys, I think, have probably dug a little bit more detail, but how do you create the urgency um, around the fact that Sweden's in a comfortable position, but it's not going to last? And I think that's a lot of what you guys have developed a lot more. We did think really strongly, though, um, that you need to give the politicians the desire to participate. It's, you know, kind of us expert types who've been doing this for kind of like 10 years, mm -hmm. th despite the fact I'm so young. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you will not be able to tell, but actually I've been doing this a long time. The, the thing is, is that if we don't, you know, we, it, we, we, have to, we have to give the politicians the desire to participate in this. <laughs> we cannot continue to have a buffer zone between between the people who want this to happen and the political process. We have to, we, we, we have to confront this, and we think that means we need to engage in a constructive debate. We need to listen to some of the concerns, and we need to stop acting like outsiders and evangelists and start becoming part of an embedded solution ourselves. So part of this, how do you make pilots become actual systemic change, is you stop accepting the idea that the pilot and the idea and the experiment is the outsider. So that's, you know, that's one of the things we want to do. We also think that the continual commitment to creating a shared information base of things which we agree are true starts to help you to move forward. Um, so what we think is that there's some basic principles which, which, are, which are kind of what came out yesterday, which we think moving towards. And what this will basically turn into when we write up the manifesto mm -hmm. is that there's some principles here, and then what we're trying to do is to explore things which um, things which are sort of exemplify it the kind and also starting to think about um, what the um, the test for that could be so we, we want as a principle to have empowered actors in the system to test that we want to know that everyone has a cell a high degree of self-efficacy that if people want to participate they can we're not saying they have to participate but we want everyone to feel that they can mm. We, we, um, we came back to this slide a few times as we were working through the session. Um, and for instance, this, this desire to, to put in a formal commitment to representative democracy we thought was really important. Very, very often this is seen as a competition, it's seen as a threat to the process, of, uh, the process of democracy. And we don't see that. We want this to support representative democracy, but we need to explore what the new role of the politician is. And those two things can, can happen. So I, didn't, I wasn't going to go into this in an enormous amount of detail because a lot of this is the kind of stuff that we captured yesterday. But these are the bits that we thought were really, really important. Now, the question is, what are we going to do with that? Like principles, principles. We're going to test these against current practice. So what we want to do is we want to go to Swedish municipalities, or as I say, everybody in Germany and England mm -hmm. as well, um, and on, we want to agree some terms of engagement. We want to agree that... Um, if you're going to participate in this process, that you will admit to failure. So you, you, you're going to be honest about the skeletons in your cupboard. Um, we want to get people to be open with the results of this process. Um, and we want people to commit to close the feedback cycle. They're not necessarily going to have to do anything, but they do have to comment on and own the results. Um, what we want to do is then to discuss with Salah how you create an incentive to participate in this process. But what you, do, what you then do is you, want to you can create a lightweight approach that tests your strategies, the kind of your big plans that last five, ten years, and your smaller projects and pilots, test these things against the principles that we think are in the collaborative manifesto. Um, and we want to use civil society to judge whether or not that is an honest response. Mm. So at that point, we want, to bring the, we want to bring citizens into the process of saying, OK, if we have a set of collaborative principles and, and we've tested those, is, is this honestly where we are? Um, and this is going to be a way, we hope, of testing aspiration, testing capacity, and we think there's going to be some specific outcomes from that. Just the benefit of a conversation within the council, the benefit that you capture some internal learning uh, sy systematically against some of these principles so you can start to connect some of the projects together. 
Um, the fact that you're starting a public discussion and also the fact that you're going to find the innovators. Mm -hmm. you know, innovators within organisations are at all kinds of different levels. They're all di you know, they're kind of, they can be really unexpected people. But we think that you could use this process to flush them out. And we've got, we've got a plan for them as well. We'll come back to the innovators in a minute. Now, if you wanted to take that forward, what we'd like to do is we'd like to network the innovators together. And we'd like to create a learning network with the municipalities. What, one of our starting assumptions here is that there is already good stuff happening and that we need to connect it together. You know, let's just not go into this situation assuming that this is a blank canvas because actually people are already experimenting on this, print, on this, on this basis. We want to get people to actively decide they want to participate in this process and to commit. We want to get those commitments from all of the different actors. It's really important that you just don't get one civil service going, yeah, all right, we'll give it a go. You know, you actually want, you need to get all the bits of the organisation, the ecosystem to support it. We want them to actively put projects into the network. And these last two things, we want to commit to a learning contract, which I think is very similar to the kind of stuff you guys were coming up with here, which is that we think that there should be a, a process of shared learning that they commit to and also we want them to actively agree that they're going to share their failures and this was sort of an important principle which is like if you're going to participate you have to agree that you're going to share failure we now we need to and there's an implicit promise in that is that we have to make it possible to share failure in a safe way in a way that isn't going to cause a problem for an individual which is going to be constructive um, what we then want to do with that network um, is that we've got, some, we've got some experiments we'd like to do, like <laughs> mad professors. Um, and the thing is, <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> okay, so we want to connect pilots to strategy. You know, there are some mm. great pilots that happen, and yet they don't become systematic change. Why not? Um, so we want to find the process in the, audit pro um, in the audit process, and we want to ask these questions about them. You know, for example, we know that so there's been some great examples of participatory budgeting. It hasn't gone mainstream. It hasn't become, you know, sort of like standard operating procedure. Why not? How do we create the energy in the network which is needed to turn this into actual systemic change? <laughs> we, we have to start examining how do we actually buy stuff that supports change, not the mm. status quo. Because if we, and, and this is a really dull problem, mm. and yet it's absolutely fundamental and huge, is, is that you need to get, start getting into how are you going to create a system which actually wants to purchase new stuff when you don't know what the new stuff is going to achieve. So, so you don't know what impact it's going to have. No, you don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, yeah, so, so this is like, let's not be mistaking the fact that this is a, an enormous challenge, and it's a challenge that government everywhere is struggling with. But if you want to make this gap, this leap between wide-scale, one-off, clever projects and systemic change, you're going to have to get into this at some point, we think. Mm. OK, now, right, OK, you may have to hold me down at this point. We're very excited about this one. Um, next generation participation projects. How do we create open engagement projects that support those principles? Now, we've got a very particular example. We're definitely going to do this. Um, so we want to combine Fix My Street, collaborative planning and participatory budgeting. So imagine you've got a street. You give an amount of money to that street to say, you can fix what you like, but you've got to figure it out. You open up the data around that street, not just in terms of the how much money are you spending, but what's the, you know, what are the things which are coming up? What have we already decided about it? What's the governance arrangements? You embed a politician in this process to make sure that the people who don't participate are spoken for, mm -hmm. so that we've reinforced representative democracy, and then we make the public responsible for agenda and priority setting. So we want to do this. Is that, is that okay? Great. We're very excited about this. Okay. What we then, what we also want to do is we want to do an experiment about how do you, um, how do you model around um, uh, service design around real life experience. So this is really comes from actually what mm -hmm. Katerina was saying about we want to make transparent not just the data around the service, we want to make transparent the assumptions which are in the life journey model that the local authority is using. So that you can sit people down and going, hello, I'm the local authority, I've assumed your life is just like this. We want to involve participants in the service to say, no, actually my life isn't like this. We want to build on a co-design co discussion that can then emerge as a more co-productive service delivery model. Um, we think that this is a, this is a cycle mm. that you can experiment with and you could apply to a lot of different services. 
And so the idea is the point of the experiment is to, to examine a model which is robust enough that you could use it in service redesign. The most valuable bit of this may be for the service designers to realise how off their model is. Yeah. Mm. You know, that, that kind of like, actually, my life isn't like that. Mm. Please stop thinking that it is. <laughs> we, we also, um, and this was, this was Ch Chuck, Chuck brought this up, and it was, we, were, we were all kind of, yes, he's totally right, um, is that um, we, want to go out, we, we want to go out and find and amplify some of the civil society, some of the bottom-up projects, which we expect are there, but we want to bring them actively into this system. So what we don't want to do is to assume that everything is instigated, and, this, and Andy, you said this as well, we don't want to assume everything is instigated by the state. We're going to go and find the bottom-up projects. Um, it's a different problem if we don't find any, but we kind of expect that we will, because they're always there. Um, and then how do we amplify them, encourage them as part of this process? How do we bring them into this network rather than treating this as a... Um, as a separate thing mm. and I guess the, that comes to the one of the kind of the um, one of the values of the collaborative manifesto is this blurring of boundaries and we need to let go of the idea that actors come from a particular place and just um, absorb them as they are um, so this this is this is quite a kind of a bit of a like let's there's a bunch of stuff here but this idea of networking the innovators we think is really important because only by connecting them all together and by giving them a sense of shared power, are you going to be able to start moving forward in concept? For me, this is, what, this is why we say um, we think of this as creating a movement. Yeah. It, it's creating a new norm, which is change is normal. Mm. Everybody's an innovator. Mm. And how do you get that process started? By networking the people who believe that, mm. amplifying them and supporting them. So, and uh, uh, there's so much here which is about kind of like getting... Um, finding the stuff that is already happening and making the connections, networking the activity that's already happening. But yeah, I think that the end, the end vision should be that everybody feels that they can innovate and, and that the, the system is ready for people to, to change all the time. Um, I've got, this is a personal thing, which, I, which they let me put in, is that um, is, is not to be lazy with examples. No, yeah, yeah. You know, th there's, I, I mean, I, I always joke about the Porto Allegro thing, but like, my God, with that PB, it's like, mm. that's the only example that is known. We need to have more examples mm. in the system. We need to be constantly feeding the example monkey and making sure he's big and fat. Because if, the, if you don't do that, you don't create the sense mm. of massive change. Big, big, fat example monkey. <laughs> <laughs> However, if you take the principle of openness an open practice, an open mind, and you really uh, o open not just in terms of data, then hopefully you're creating an environment which doesn't do that. But, but again, this is, I think, a, a really valuable addition from Chuck. We need to ensure that there is always a place for minority voices. Mm. What that means is that we need to make sure that we are always making that check that it hasn't turned into a boys' club. OK, create a movement, <laughs> open and fluid. Yeah. Um, create a new norm that everyone's an innovator. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we happy with that? Mm. Yeah. Well, has it, yeah. 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 It, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, um, and then this idea that you celebrate failure, the, the minority thing is now at the bottom, it's under here, but mm. let me not think that that is any, in any way symbolic of how we feel about minorities. <laughs> <laughs> it is more symbolic of my <laughs> keynote skills. <laughs> um, but um, the idea of celebrating failure, um, we thought, you know, again, is, is creating a safe place, and it's mm. very much connected to, this, to the idea of the new norm. Okay, now I, I think that there's a lot of, the, I mean, there's a lot of work, there's a lot of complexity in the idea of, net, of, of creating a network with the view to creating a movement. And I also think that part of that is um, the more design you do in advance, um, the less likely you are to create the energy in the network. Because if it looks prescriptive, which is why, definitely do this, uh, we want an unconference. We want to just like bring them together put them in a bag and fight it out like ferrets, okay? It's the <laughs> just like, just bring all these people together, do not have an agenda, and see what happens. Because every time this is done, good stuff happens. I, I think, I, I, my, my experience is, and, I, mm. and I, I bring my experience of doing City Camp Brighton to this, mm. and also local Gov Camp and UK government mm. Gov Camp as a participant, is, is have, a, have a kind of, a, have a sort of a, a shared purpose. Well, that's mm. what I mean. Yeah, but yeah. not an agenda in the sense no, no, of like no, how no, we do no, it. Yeah. How you get there doesn't matter. Right? But, no. but I, I think that we'd like to make the relationship between citizen and state more e collaborative. Mm. I think that is a that brilliant a shared purpose. purpose. Yeah. Yes. And then all of these people that we found that are already doing fantastic stuff and who have skills and come from all different right. sectors and boundaries, you know, all kinds of things, 
put them together. There are a couple of things, like it wasn't a to-do list, this was a don't forget to do this stuff, um, is that we think we need to, um, that manifesto needs to become something which is living. Mm. Um, it also needs to be something which is never finished. Um, so it is a wiki. It, it is something which you constantly refresh and renew and you can change because if that becomes, if that becomes um, codified, then you've lost the innovation immediately. Yeah. Um, we need to actually create the audit, pr audit process, but it's all right, Rolf and I will do that. Um, and then the, the, the other thing, and this is not to forget, is we have to make sure that there are benefits for all of the participants. And I think this is the point about the need to bring in civil society and things like that. Mm. The minute that we start to think that, you know, this is going to be one of, one of the fundamentals about networks is the idea of reciprocity. Um, the idea that, 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 that everything is a two-way relationship. Mm -hmm. And so if we don't embed that idea of reciprocity in this in insurance, you can't share power if you're not sharing benefits. So think about that. And it's also a really important principle for sort of how do you involve people. Think about it from their point of view. So, truly that. It was a plan. Oh. <laughs>